So here's an example of a carbon monoxide a sensor. You know, just like you can t test for radon inside, you can also test for carbon monoxide. And in this case, this particular carbon monoxide unit, the, the units are always going to be, you know, parts per million. And so what they're saying here on this, on this particular carbon monoxide sensor, it's sensing 35 parts per million. All right. Um, and so the carbon monoxide is another one of those dangerous things inside. You know, there's poorly ventilated combustion engines. Um, you know, because of generators and oil heaters and whatnot, that's, that's how you would end up with getting a high concentration of carbon monoxide. Under normal circumstances, you really shouldn't have carbon monoxide as a problem in your house. Um, uh, another place where sometimes you can have it build up is if you're, like, you have a pilot light on your stove and it's not well ventilated, something like that, you could have small amounts being built up over time. All right. So there's ways of sensing it. You know, you can buy one if you're worried about it. But um, most smoke detectors also have carbon monoxide sensors and whatnot, and it's, it's normally not a problem. All right. But here's a question about this particular carbon monoxide sensor. All right. Uh, concerning the significant digits. And in this question, it says, you know, the carbon monoxide monitors are available for homes and businesses. And in figure 1.21, that's this figure right here, you see a, um, a carbon monoxide detector that reads 35 parts per million. And the question is, would it be more helpful to have the meter that reads 35.03882217 parts per million? Please explain. All right, what do you think? All right. Well, the, um, let me see, where do I have this? I can't remember. Can you remember what are the levels of carbon monoxide that are considered Safe. Oh, I wrote that someplace else. Oh, no, I've got it right here. Um, well, as it turns out, you know, according to the EPA, um, nine parts per million carbon monoxide is the maximum exposure allowed over eight hours. And in a short term, like over an hour, the maximum exposure is 35. All right, so on your carbon monoxide sensor, if, if what you're worried about is, you know, are you safe or not, um, do you think it makes any difference on that sensor to read it out to 3.03882217 parts per million? Well, the answer is no, because all you need to know is to this number, 35, am I above 35? I'm not safe. Am I below 35? I'm safe, but it's probably, you know, if it's going to be a long exposure, it's not safe. But in a short term, you ought to be fine. Um, so no, it doesn't. Just putting all those numbers doesn't add to the device and the way the device was designed and the purpose of the device. So it's just confusing to the consumer to put all those numbers. All right. And then it says, would this number be more valid? Please explain. Well, I don't know. It depends. The only way you would know that is it depends on how sensitive your carbon monoxide sensor is. And if you can actually measure it out to that detail or in that level of concentration to that unit, that digit, then you have an incredibly expensive device probably. And, um, you know, if it's that accurate, then that's fine. It's a more accurate read of the carbon di uh, di monoxide, but, um, but that would depend on the device. Okay. So that, you know, if it's kind of like if you calculate a number on your calculator and you bring it out to that many points, that depends on was the initial measurement really that accurate or not. If it wasn't, then all those numbers are absolutely meaningless. If, you, if the carbon monoxide is really that sensitive, this, the sensor is that sensitive, then that was one expensive device. So I doubt it.